I can reassure the members of the committee that our banking system is sound and that Americans can feel confident that their deposits will be there when they need them. Not at all. In fact, that comp- that comment is as accurate as her earlier comments that inflation was transitory or the comments back uh, in the days of the, leading up to the 08 financial crisis when her and everybody else at the Fed was saying that not to worry about subprime because it was contained. Now, thanks to Janet Yellen, particularly what she did as Fed chair, you know, she kept interest rates at zero for practically her entire term as Fed chairman. That's the reason that we had such a big bubble, those low interest rates and quantitative easing, and she was part of that. That's why all these banks are loaded up with now underwater long-term treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. So the banking system is a house of cards. It, it, it couldn't be less sound. And partially, uh, Jada Yellen is to blame for the current state of affairs. Peter, we're really grateful for your analysis because you often give us uh, a lot more background and context. Um, when it comes to the nearly half a percent decrease in the CPI, um, what does that actually tell you about the state of the economy? Well, as I said, the, the economy is is literally a house of cards. I mean, it's, it's imploding. But inflation is going to get much worse because the Fed has already returned to quantitative easing. Whether they admit it or not, the way they are bailing out all the banks is by printing new money and adding it into the economy and taking on mortgages and government debt onto their already bloated balance sheet. So the Fed's balance sheet is going to go up. The money supply is going to go up. And that means consumer prices are going to go way up. And in fact, when President Biden is trying to tell everybody that they're not going to have to pay the costs of the bank bailout, he's lying. They're going to pay the cost through higher prices. And when he says that everybody's bank account is now safe, it's not. It's in more danger than ever before because your bank account is going to be eroded in value due to inflation. So even if your bank doesn't fail and you don't lose your money, your money is going to lose its value. Well, first of all, the reason that the bank failed was because of the artificially low interest rate and QE environment that the bank operated in uh, for a decade. It was the, the Federal Reserve that that created all these distortions by its artificial suppression of interest rates, and it caused financial institutions to take incredible risk in order to get a return. And also, the U.S. government, through banking regulations, actually encouraged these banks, through favorable accounting, to load up on treasuries and mortgages because they didn't take a haircut on those assets like they would for other assets, nor were they required to mark them to market. So as they were losing value, they pretended they had no no losses. And so this whole thing was a byproduct of you know bad monetary and fiscal policy. Cryptocurrency actually got started in response to the 2008 financial crisis and the fear that all the money printing would lead to inflation, which of course it has and it's only getting started. But I think the people who turn to Bitcoin and other cryptos as an alternative to fiat currencies or as a store of value or inflation hedge, uh, they were mistaken. They got suckered into a bubble. They bought into fool's gold. And I think there's a lot of money that's going to be lost in that space. And a lot of companies that are operating in crypto and blockchain are going to lose a lot of money. Unfortunately for Silicon Valley Bank, they were banking a lot of those companies. And so uh, that was also another problem that they encountered in other banks that have made loans uh, to crypto related companies and other tech companies for that matter. Uh, these loans are going to go bad uh, because these companies have no profits. In fact, they have huge losses. Wait, don't be a stranger. Hit the subscribe button and join our online family. Once again, the government has made another mistake in a long line of mistakes. It's because of the government uh, that uh, Silicon Valley Bank was in the position that it was. Uh, The reason it owned so many long-term, low-yielding U.S. treasuries and mortgage-backed securities was because the Fed kept interest rates at zero for so long. And the reason that it chose those assets was because bank regulators kind of push banks into treasuries and mortgage-backed securities because they give them favorable accounting treatment. They don't have to take any haircuts. They don't have to mark them to market. So the government created the problem, and now they're creating a bigger problem with the bailout 
because this is going to cost Americans a lot of money, not because their taxes are going to be raised, but because the Federal Reserve is financing this massive bailout by creating even more inflation. So Americans are going to pay for this at the supermarket, at the gas station. Their cost of living is going to go way up. If you thought inflation was bad last year, it's about to get a whole lot worse. Well, what you want to have is companies that do well in an inflationary time period with rising rates. We're going to be in that for the balance of this decade and maybe longer. So you want to have companies that have real earnings right now, not in the distant future, that pay good dividends and importantly, that sell products and services that consumers need to buy. So they have pricing power. So they can raise their prices along with their costs, maintain their margins and raise their dividends. But I think most important for Americans, I believe the dollar is ultimately going to tank. We're going to have a currency crisis, not just a financial crisis. And so you'll have a much better hedge against inflation if your income streams are coming from abroad because they're being paid to you in foreign currencies. Mm -hmm. And when you translate them back into weakening U.S. dollars, that means even higher dividends. And that will help offset the rise cost of living uh, that you're going to be experiencing here in the United States as a result of past, current, and future uh, risk uh, ex- excessive Fed uh, uh, money printing. Well, unfortunately, it's going to get red hot. You know, what's happening right now in the banking system is a direct consequence of bad monetary and fiscal policy. The government and the Federal Reserve caused the 2008 financial crisis. They have caused this 2023 greater financial crisis. Thanks to the government, the entire U.S. banking system is a house of cards. The majority of U.S. banks are insolvent, and because they're all going to get bailed out, and the U.S. government, every bank account is going to be eviscerated by inflation. The Fed is going to print trillions of dollars to bail out the banks and the government, and that means every one of your listeners is going to see the value of their savings collapse as prices go through the roof. Now, that regulation didn't do anything. You know, they tried to close the barn doors well after the horses had left. The problem wasn't a lack of regulation. It was an excessive amount of regulation that prevented the free market from working, and there was tremendous moral hazard. You know, and by the way, U.S. banking regulations encouraged banks to load up on government debt, mortgage-backed securities, and the Federal Reserve gave them no choice by keeping interest rates at zero for over a decade. Uh, Well, of course, it's a massive bailout. And, you know, we shouldn't even have an FDIC. We had a much sounder banking system before we got the FDIC during the New Deal. But now it's a much bigger moral hazard than ever before. And sure, the cost of deposit insurance is borne by the customers of the bank. It's passed on like any cost. But the real damage is the moral hazard that it does because Americans don't give a damn about the risk that the banks take. They just put their money anywhere because it's all guaranteed by the government. What we need is a free market to ensure that the banking system is sound. But thanks to the government, it is completely unsound. As I said, it's a house of cards. It's a leveraged mess. The whole thing is going to implode. But what's going to happen is the Fed is going to bail out the entire system. And so you're not going to lose your money. The bank is going to have your money. The problem is your money is going to lose its value. So So it can get your money out of the bank, but you won't be able to buy anything with it. Well, if most people don't leave much money in the bank, I mean, take it out, buy yourself some gold, silver, do something. But you're going to lose dramatically if you have cash, if you have a deposit in the bank. It doesn't matter if the government insures it or not. They don't insure you against inflation. In fact, they have to create inflation to bail out everybody else. But at this point, you know, it's too late to do the right thing. I mean, they should have done the right thing 20 years ago, uh, 12 years ago. I don't see any precedent in the U.S. government doing the right thing. Every time they get a chance, they do the wrong thing, and that includes the Federal Reserve. So you've got to protect yourself uh, from this incompetence. I mean, the majority of Americans, I said, are going to get wiped out by inflation. Now, the government is going to try to blame inflation on the private sector, on the greedy businessmen who are jacking up their prices, or they try blaming it on Putin. But the sole source of all inflation is the U.S. government. It's the government that spends the money and the Federal Reserve that prints it. These massive deficits that we have under Biden, but we had them under Trump, we had them under Obama. All of these deficits are the source of inflation. You don't get anything for free for the government. All government spending has to be paid for. And if you don't pay for it through taxation, Mm -hmm. you're going to pay for it through inflation. Higher prices are a tax. And every American has had a huge tax increase under the Biden administration. Whether he admits it or not.